Hi guys, this is Jordan with Motion Array. Have you ever been editing high quality video on a really garbage computer? Chances are it's been really frustrating, waiting for everything to buffer or rendering everything out just so that you can see what you've actually done so far. It sucks, but there's a way to get around it, and that's by using proxy files. So what are proxy files? Basically, they're low quality versions of your original footage that are faster and easier to work with. Think about it like drawing in pencil before going over everything in permanent marker. The only difference is that once you're done all the work, all you have to do is push a button and Premiere puts all of the high quality versions back into place. I know, it's amazing. So let's dive in and let's learn how to work with proxy files. So we're here inside of Premiere and we just need to set a few things up before we can actually get things going. Once you select new project, you'll see the new project window. If you don't know how to set up a project, check out the first video in our Premiere Pro Basics course. It's totally free and it's in the link in the description below. Set up your project like you normally would, but then you're just gonna change one main thing. Go to ingest settings and click ingest. You'll have a few different options now, but what you wanna do is select create proxies. From here, you can choose the size of your proxy files. There's two main things that you really wanna remember. The bigger number will mean a higher quality of file. So 1280 by 720 will be a higher quality than 1024 by 540. My suggestion is 720 is already a pretty decent reduction. So unless your computer is absolute trash, you might not need to actually go down to 540. But in this tutorial, I wanna show you the most extreme difference. So we're gonna choose 540. The other question is, do you choose H.264 or GoPro Cineform? The question is basically file size versus how smooth the footage will run. When you make proxies, you're actually creating a low quality copy of the original footage. H.264 will take up less space on your computer, but it will also take up more CPU power trying to actually display and chug through it. Cineform will take up more space on your computer's hard drive when you make copies, but it will take less work for your computer to actually play it. This is your choice based on what your priority is and how much storage space you have available for this project. For me, I'm gonna go with Cineform. Now let's go down to proxy destination and set where we wanna put the files. For me personally, I like to keep them in their own folder in the same project location. So instead of same as project, I'm gonna choose their location manually, and I'm gonna create a folder just for the proxy files. The reason I'm going to do this is because once the project is complete and I've exported the final version and I'm done with all of those files, I wanna keep the original footage that I shot, but I wanna delete all of the proxies to save space. I usually don't re-edit projects again after completing them, and those proxy files will just be wasting space. So this is just gonna make it easier for us to save time and computer storage later on in the future. Now that that's all done, click OK. Now the next part is fun. When you add your footage, either from the media browser or just by dragging and dropping, the Adobe Media Encoder will automatically pop up and start creating the proxy files for your footage, automatically. Keep in mind, I'm using Premiere Pro CC 2017. If you're running an older version of Premiere, it's possible this process will only work if you import directly through the media browser. Once Adobe Media Encoder is done with its job, you won't notice any difference. There's still one last thing that you need to do. Go to your program monitor and go to the button editor here, which is this plus sign. From here, you'll have a bunch of buttons that you can add at the base of the monitor. You're looking for this one called toggle proxies. Drag it on and now whenever you press this button and highlight it blue, your project will start using the proxy files instead of the originals. When we unselect it, bringing it back to gray, we're working with our original footage again. Let's toggle it on again. And if everything works as expected, you should be able to work much faster and easier with your footage. The original footage that we're working with here are our 3 d red files, so they can be challenging to work with sometimes depending on your computer. But our button is highlighted blue, so we're working with the proxies that are much faster. Even if we start adding some crazy effects and duplicating our footage, we're still able to keep up with it. There's absolutely no lag when we scrub through our footage, even if we go incredibly fast. This really starts to help once you have a timeline of about five minutes of footage, text, effects, audio, etc. Proxies can absolutely save your bacon on a project if your computer is giving you trouble. Lastly, if you need to make a proxy file for an individual clip and you didn't do it at the beginning during the ingest, that's okay. Simply go down to that individual file, right click, select proxy, and create proxies. From here, you can set up a proxy file just like you did before. So that's it, guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, we've got lots of other tutorials and tools that can benefit filmmakers, all at motionarray.com. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.